guys, it's Claire from ASMR Rooms. I hope you're doing well and welcome to my little home studio. Today, I'm going to show you some behind the scene footage of how I made the Ravenclaw dormitory in 3D software. It is called Autodesk Maya. It was such a fun project for me to do and this video is not exactly going to be a tutorial but I'm going to explain my process step by step so if you're a 3D artist or you make your own ambience video or maybe you're just curious about my workflow I hope this video will be fun for you to watch There will be an awesome giveaway at the end of this video so please stay tuned and don't forget to check it out I also like to give special thanks to all my patrons. Thank you guys so much for supporting me. Especially now YouTube has been putting pressure on Ambience channels with uh, demonetization and uh, your support just means the world to me. And of course, I'm grateful to all my subscribers. Thank you so much for watching and sharing. I can't do what I love without you. So thank you so much and I plan to bring you so much more videos in the coming year. If you like the Ravenclaw dormitory video, head over to my Patreon page to see a different version. It has rain and thunderstorms, it's my personal favorite ambience, and I think it tells a different story, so please check it out! Alright, let's get started. I'm gonna let my computer screen take over from here. The software I'm using is called Autodesk Maya and it is a really powerful 3D computer animation software with modeling, rendering, uh, simulations, dynamics, texturing, and animation tools for artists and uh, designers, animators, you name it. So it is really good. Okay, so using Maya's modeling tool, first thing first, we are creating a Decagon, which is a polygon with 10 sides. Um, this is just based on the old Pottermore design of the Gryffindor common room where you're in a circular room uh, and five beds. So 10 sides seem to make sense. And now I am importing a pre-made window that I got from a stock website. It is beautiful. It's a really nice uh, medieval looking window that I think fit this room really well. So I'm just gonna bring it in and resize it to fit the scale of my current scene. And now the window needs a opening. So using Maya's insert edge loop tool, insert edge loop try say that 10 times um, i'm just gonna add more definition onto the bare walls behind the window and i'm just roughly tracing the window's shapes like i'm putting a line on the top on the bottom on two sides and where the window is curving and we're adding more definitions to make sure we can select the faces that's covering the window and delete them there you go. And I'm choosing the vertices or vertex that is protruding and just using various uh, move and scaling tools to move them out of the way. So they're hidden behind the window frames. And that looks great. What a nice window. So going back to where we see the whole room, I'm just quickly deleting faces that's on the other side uh, where there are no windows because we gave the wall a nice opening to fit the window and now we don't want to do that five more times so we're gonna group the window and the wall piece together and use Maya's duplicate special tool and we're going to make four copies there you go that looks like a nice tower room and I'm just going to select one of the pieces and hide it temporarily because when we lower the camera to the floor level, um, the wall is going to be in the way when we're working inside the room. So it's good to hide it but not delete it just in case we need it back. Okay, now I have a pre-made little twin bed that I just imported. Uh, the scale is a little off um, but it's not too bad. I'm just gonna reposition it and place it in the desired position in the room like that. 
And now I am going to create a camera that is different from Maya's default cameras. I am creating a new camera where I can lock it in place at a nice angle and don't have to worry about moving it like I'm constantly moving around in the perspective view. And here we're actually stepping ahead to change the render setting, which I like to take care of in the beginning. So you can see the default render setting is pointing to the perspective camera and it's only 540 pixels high. So we're gonna change it to 4K because that's how we roll. And I'm turning on the title safety and basically whatever is in this frame is what the final render is going to include. Adjusting the camera is always really fun. You can change the focal length to be different than the default 35, which mimics either a wider angle camera if you lower the focal length, or if you increase it, the camera angle is less wide, thus we get uh, less distortions. So I think that looks good for now. And we're going to import a very ugly four poster bed <laughs> where I'm gonna harvest some parts from it. I'm gonna align it with the cute little twin bed. Make sure the position and size align. And what we're really gonna take from this poster bed is just the posts. Uh, so the frame and the curtains look nice. So basically I'm deleting everything else. And now obviously it's too wide. So in vertice mode, I'm choosing the left pose and pulling it towards us. This way, we're not changing the thickness, we're just moving them in position. I find this way safer than scaling the whole structure. Now I'm just noticing the curtain rings are a little off, so I'm gonna zoom in on that and try to fix it. Oh, it's way off. Maybe scale it a little bit. Uh, no, doesn't fit. Forget it. I think I'm just going to move it. That looks passable. All right. So selecting the whole left group, I'm moving it to fit the posts. Looks good. Doing the same thing with the other two groups. And I've already hidden the front left group because I thought that was, it was too much curtains. It blocked too much of the nice bed. So here we go. Looks nice. All right, I can't stand the green anymore. Let's change it to our Ravenclaw blue, which is one of my favorite colors. That looks so, so good. Awesome. Looks like a Ravenclaw room now. So here comes the fun part, which is my favorite is the lighting. I know it's, the room seems kind of empty and it might be a little early for the lighting, but I like to set the lights early and it might impact my decisions in terms of where I want objects to be placed. And here I am using a directional light and placing it near the windows. You don't have to do this way, but I like to mimic the natural lights if I'm making a semi-photorealistic scene when the lights have a source to them, like whether they're from a fireplace or from windows. If they have a source, the story I'm conveying through the scene is more believable. And now I'm just noticing our bed was floating. So I just made a big box under it and gave it the same wood texture as the headboard and the rest of the bed. And I don't really like the light wood that's going on there. So I'm taking the texture image itself into Adobe Photoshop to make it a darker color. And there, that looks a lot more regal, like our Ravenclaws. Looks nicer. So I have just skipped forward a little bit and adjusted the lighting to be way darker to convey a night scene. And it's probably a little too dark right now, but we can always brighten it later. The shadow looks nice though. The wall and the window desperately need some textures. So I think we are in one of the highest towers in Hogwarts and, and the room is probably made from stone. So here I am choosing a bricks texture for the walls with the help of Google and my little 
library of seamless textures, which come in handy all the time. Uh, I think it's a little too busy. I'm, I don't really like it. Um, let's try a different one that is better. You know, the walls are not really the hero in the scenes. So I like that. A subtle texture works really well here. And here is the flooring. All right, let's try a wooden floor texture, which is what they did in the Hogwarts mystery uh, mobile game. But I'm just not really a big fan of it. I think the tower room in the castle should probably have a stone floor. Let's choose a different type of brick, maybe? How's that? It's a little busy, but maybe we can make it work. Uh, the floor will be covered with other beds and furniture and carpets anyway. I think that looks good for now. Okay, now we're happy with the bed design. We are safe to duplicate that, just like the walls and windows, four times. Here we have five beds for five Ravenclaw students. And that looks pretty good. And we're gonna hide two of the beds just because they're in my camera's way. And look through the render cam. I like that framing, it's not bad. Finally, our little tower room is no longer lonely. Okay, that looks okay, but the room seems a little too small. It's almost like a little prison cell right now. <laughs> it doesn't look like the airy Ravenclaw dorm room I was envisioning. So, scale it up and reduplicate the five beds to be further away from each other. I think that looks good. All right, now let's place some furniture. This is really fun. Let's try a armchair. Whoa, that is huge. Wow, that is an armchair too big for King Kong. Okay, let's shrink it down and bring in another chair just to compare because I'm not too crazy about this butterfly design. Where is it? Uh, where? Oh, this time it's tiny. Oh, that's too cute. Little chair. All right, let's scale you up and, and place her on the other side to compare, give it the same material. All right, I think the plain armchair works so much better than the weird butterfly one. So let's get rid of it. Much better. We will move it back to the left side where it looks comfortable. Awesome. I really dig the blue and gold aesthetics of Ravenclaw House. It looks super nice. And guys, I know I'm rushing through this because the whole screen recording of how I built the scene was like eight hours long <laughs> and I don't want to bore you with this. So if you have any questions, feel free to comment below. Maya has a great dynamics section and it can do simulations for cloth and hair and liquid. Tons of realistic simulations waiting for you. I did the water surface in the prefix bathroom video using Maya's simulation, so it works really well. Okay, this armchair looks a little uncomfortable. I think we're gonna add a little throw. So here I'm just creating a plane and giving it tons of subdivisions. So here I am assigning the cloth a different material just so it's easier to see. And here we go, switching to effects panel. I am making this plane an M cloth, which is a simulated cloth and making the chair and the cushion both passive colliders. This is very important because otherwise the cloth is just gonna go through the chair, go through the cushion. It doesn't know where it should land. And let it play. Oh boy. I mean, that's sort of what I wanna do, but it is crashing through that couch. In the end cloth parameters, we're going to use a different preset to make the cloth material harder and uh, less stretchy. Burlap, metal, definitely not. Silk, you can see there are so many options. And let's try a loose knit. Let's see how that does. Okay, it's stiffer, it's a little better. It still penetrated the couch. I actually don't want it to drape there anyway. So I'm just gonna make the cloth a little smaller and have it just drip over the arm and the cushion. 
All right, I think that looks really nice. I like the shape. I'm gonna give it a nice sky and stars texture, assuming that's what Ravenclaws like. <laughs> and let's do a render test. Looks good. And from here on out, guys, I am just gonna fast forward through the rest of the process. I am not using any new tools. I'm just placing different furniture and props into the scene, adjusting their materials and textures to them more realistic and give them some variations. I like how in this scene, the boxes look like they are having a little meeting. All right, looks good. It's still dark, but don't worry. I'm gonna adjust lighting at the end. Adding some bookshelves and cabinets. Uh, Ravenclaws like to read, right? They're smart. And during this part of the modeling process, I'm pretty much just gonna throw on an ambience video or some kind of a lo-fi jazz uh, music that I like and get in the zone because it really is like building Legos. You rely on your vision and your creativity and, and make the room however you like. It is your playground. And that is the finished scene in Maya. There are a lot more animating process going on after the modeling, which I've already showed you some in last year's making off video with the Hufflepuff dorm room project. And that's it guys. That is how I built the Ravenclaw dorm room in 3D and animated in After Effects. Now, are we ready for the giveaway? This year, I have four beautiful hats to give away thanks to my friend at Queen of the Darned. She has sent me four beautiful handmade hats, each representing one of the Hogwarts houses. So we have red and gold for Gryffindor, yellow and black for Hufflepuff, green and silver for Slytherin, blue and silver for Ravenclaw. They look so beautiful and they feel so nice and soft, guys. I am so excited to give these away to four of you. Last but not least, a fifth person will be winning my ASMR Rooms mug. It says, when in doubt, go to the library per Hermione. And obviously, we should all listen to Hermione. The way to enter this giveaway is super simple. Just comment below which item you would like to receive. And the winners will be chosen randomly and announced on my Instagram. So definitely look out for that and good luck everybody. I hope you win. Thank you guys so much for watching this video and I hope you have a great holiday. Our annual Christmas video this year is going to be Harry Potter related and it's going to drop pretty soon. So stay tuned. Bye. Last.